Welcome to Christ and Culture. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to be looking at an article in Yahoo Finance, and it's dealing with a topic that I covered about three or four years ago. It is the situation at Wheaton College, my old alma mater that I graduated from decades ago, and it is talking about a professor who was let go because of her bad theology. That's what it boils down to. But the documentary that we'll be showing on National Public Radio, NPR, uh, National Public Television, is going to spin that whole situation to try to make the, the college look bad, Christianity look bad, Bible-believing Christians look bad. It's a, it's a hit piece, in other words. And we're going to go through this article and we're going to answer some of these charges. It's called Same God, and it will be appearing on all kinds of national public television stations. Unfortunately, I have not been able to get a hold of a copy or even see this anywhere online or through the airwaves because it's so difficult to actually get a screening or get a viewing of this. They're releasing it city by city, national public television uh, city by city, so it's it's not all on one day, and there are no uh, previews available, and you can't get a hold of the actual documentary. So you, I, you have to just, I guess, wait for National Public Television to air it in your city for it to be something you can actually see. So I don't have the benefit of actually seeing the movie. Maybe after I see the movie, I will feel differently about what is described here, but I doubt it. I doubt it because I think the article here gives the basically the gist of the whole movie. So we're going to cover that. It's called Same God, and the title here on Yahoo Finance by Alex Morris of Rolling Stone. This is a Rolling Stone article that is reprinted in Yahoo Finance. So Rolling Stone, you can take that for whatever it's worth. Same God exposes hypocrisy of the church. So this is a hit piece and the power of faith. So exposing the hypocrisy of the church, bad church, and then the power of faith, that's her, that's her faith. So a triumph of the individual over the uh, mean, bad, awful Christianity, the church, Christian institutions. We can see where the whole headline steps up the uh, the hit piece here. So let's get into the article and let me get into uh, my commentary on this. It says, on December 10th, 2015, Wheaton College professor Luisha Hawkins logged into Facebook and unwittingly made a post that would explode her life. It was just days after a married couple inspired by a jihadist ideology had committed the San Bernardino, San Bernardino massacre, and figures like Donald Trump, Jerry Falwell Jr., and Ted Cruz were vocally and publicly demonizing Muslims. Well, no. Uh, again, we have to stop right there. That is the author of this article's characterization of their comments. Demonizing Muslims. No. They were criticizing militant Islam, because militant Islam blows people up. Militant Islam commits acts of terrorism. Militant Islam is evil. They weren't saying that about all Muslims. I defy this author, Alex Morris, or anyone else, to go back and see what Donald Trump, Jerry Falwell Jr., and Ted Cruz said that demonized all Muslims or Islam itself. You can criticize Islam for its message of violence. You can go to parts of the Quran. You can do that. That's theology. But no, these individuals were not demonizing Muslims in general. They were talking about radical Islamic terrorism. Some people, when you use that phrase, radical Islamic terrorism, they feel that that's a demonization of all Muslims. No, it's targeting the type that blow people up. And there's nothing, anything in the world wrong with characterizing these Islamic terrorists 
as Islamic radical militant terrorists. So again, we have this uh, hit piece where Alex Morris is going through and doing his very best to try to tar and feather Christians. A political scientist, the first black woman to gain tenure at the Illinois College, the nation's most renowned evangelical Christian school, Hawkins realized the further violence their message could incite. The further violence their message could incite. Who? Trump? Falwell? Cruz? The violence their message could incite? So, people who are speaking against radical militant Islam, terrorist, they're violent, but you don't talk about the radical militant Islamic terrorists. Again, this is so blatantly a hit piece that it's almost hard to get through it without stopping every mid-sentence to really refute what is being said here. Hawkins, who is a Christian at a Christian school realize the further violence their message could incite as well as the danger it posed to something she felt all Christians should hold dearly, religious liberty. We do hold dearly to religious liberty. The right of all to practice their faith without fear of discrimination or retaliation. Okay, so how does that affect Muslims in the United States? saying that we should combat radical Islamic terrorism. Um, again, it's almost as if if you say radical Islamic terrorists, you're inciting harm against Muslims. Or if you say militant Islam, that is somehow inciting violence against all Muslims. No, again, it's this super sensitivity to everything that could, could possibly offend a Muslim. That is... That is not true and accurate thinking. And so, you know, Larisha Hawkins, it brings up the point here that she's the first black woman to gain tenure at Illinois College. Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to this issue, whether it was white or black. It didn't matter. I think the author is trying to say, and there's also racism involved. He didn't say that, but that's what he's implying. It doesn't matter that she's the first black woman to gain tenure at Illinois, does it? I mean, on the merits of what she did, that's the issue, not her skin color. Wheaton College never said anything, did anything, or indicated in any way that they were acting in a discriminatory way. And yet this author wants to bring in race. He wants to bring in uh, uh, feared violence against Islam. He, he wants to bring in everything to try to smear and do a hit job on this college. It's really, really sad. As an act of embodied solidarity, whatever that means, with Muslim women who publicly wear signs of their faith, Hawkins pledged to wear a hijab throughout the Christmas season. and an act of embodied solidarity with Muslim women. Okay, here's a Christian woman professor at a Christian college, an a evangelical Bible-believing Christian college, and she's going to be an activist for Muslim women, embodied solidarity with Muslim women who publicly wear signs of their faith. Yeah, they do wear a public sign of faith, but that's their religion. That's, that's Islam right? They also have burqas where they cannot see. The men in their religion don't let them leave the home without having every place of skin covered because that's part of their religion. So this Christian woman professor is going to identify and stand in solidarity with another woman's religious faith practice through the Christmas season, which is a Christian, traditionally a Christian holiday. It, there's all kinds of problems here, and uh, she should know better. She should know as a Christian professor professing Christianity at a Christian college, she should know that this is not appropriate for a Christian professor to be standing in solidarity with Muslim women 
wearing their sign of faith. It's not a Christian sign of faith. It's not where some of these Christian churches have women with head coverings, but it's not a hijab and it's not a burqa. It's a different type of head covering and everyone can tell the difference between those types of head covering. A hijab is a very distinctively Muslim religious practice and custom. So here's a Christian professor who knows better, works at a Christian institution, influencing Christian men and women, who is going to wear the signs and symbols of the Muslim faith at Christmas time. Yeah, something wrong there. On Facebook, she posted a picture of herself doing so along with the message. And here's a really problematic thing. I stand in religious solidarity with Muslims. I stand in religious solidarity with Muslims because they, like me, a Christian, are people of the book. Okay, stop right there. There is a reference in the Quran for, about people of the book. It is not a reference to people in the Islamic faith. It is not a reference. It's people who read the Old Testament, who read the New Testament, and they're called Christians who are people of the book. We do not hold to the Quran. We do not accept the Quran. Uh, the Muslim faith, Muslims do not accept the Old Testament as, as it is written, and they do not accept the New Testament as it's written. So they do not accept the Bible. Um, they are not people of the book. They're not of the Old Testament. They're not of the New Testament. Now, they are people of a book, but that's not the same thing. And so there's a confusion here. People, when the Quran talks about people of the book, it's talking about Christians and Jews. It's not talking about we're all together because we all believe in the, in the same book. We're all together because we believe in the same scriptures. No, it's not at all. So this is not accurate. She, she's a professor at a Christian college. She's teaching uh, Christian young people theology, and she doesn't have it right. And she's standing in religious solidarity. Now, if she had said, I stand in political or I stand in basic human rights solidarity, uh, that would be one thing. But she's standing in religious solidarity with the Muslims. Why is a Christian standing in religious solidarity with Muslims? It would be the same thing. Why would a, a Christian stand in religious or spiritual solidarity with a Buddhist? Or stand in religious or spiritual solidarity with a Hindu? Yeah, you're, you're crossing lines. You're crossing sides. Are you a Christian? If you're a Christian, you accept the Christian message. You believe that that is the one true faith. So you don't stand in religious or spiritual solidarity with a Muslim because they repudiate Jesus as Lord. They repudiate Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. They repudiate. They, they oppose that. You can get yourself killed for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ in a, in a Muslim, many different Muslim countries. Not all, but, but many. So there's a confusion of categories here. And then finally, her last statement, and as Pope Francis stated last week, we, should, we worship the same God. Now, this is very problematic because, first of all, she's teaching at an evangelical Protestant Christian school, not a Roman Catholic school. Now, if she were at Notre Dame, if she were at Boston College, if she were at all kinds of uh, Franciscan University of Steubenville, all kinds, Ava Maria College in Florida, if she were at Roman Catholic Institution, Georgetown University and so forth, there are all kinds of them, if she said that and 
what did she say? And, and as Pope Francis stated last week, we worship the same. If she had been a Roman Catholic in a Roman Catholic institution and she said that, perfectly okay for her to do that. Perfectly makes sense, perfectly in line with the theology. And in fact, you would expect no less if you were a Roman Catholic professor at a Roman Catholic institution, you would, uh, in fact, say something like that. But she is a Protestant professor at a Protestant college, the leading Protestant evangelical college in the nation. And she's quoting Pope Francis on theology and saying we worship the same God. Well, obviously there's a problem there. Obviously. So what would what did she expect? So she gets on social media. She wears a traditional Muslim Islamic headpiece, the hijab. She says she stands in religious solidarity with the Muslim women. And then she quotes a Roman Catholic pope and says, after all, we all worship the same God anyway. And what would she expect would happen? Did she expect that anyone at Wheaton College might be offended? You know, we're in a world of offended statements. You know, everyone's offended by this and everyone's offended by that. And um, there was a speaker that came to Wheaton College just a couple years ago, pro-life uh, African-American speaker and said that abortion is a black genocide. And he was criticized heavily by a certain number of students who were offended by his message and the, the college took that very seriously. His, his people being offended by the pro-life message at a Wheaton Christian college. And yet this professor uh, felt that she could wear a, the emblem and a symbol of a different religion and stay, said she stands with that, um, uh, the women of that religion and that just like Pope Francis says, we all worship the same God. And she didn't think anything would happen as far as the administration and the president and any consequences of that. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange that uh, someone with her level of education would would actually do something like that and be shocked that there was some kind of pushback. Now, the documentary Same God, which airs this weekend on PBS World Channel, traces the aftermath of that post and how the historically defensible implication that Christians and Muslims share a deity, if not a theology, cost Hawkins her job, her safety, and her security. Okay, so this author is saying, Alex Morris, is saying that believing that the Muslims and Christians worship the same God, if not the same theology, is a historically defensible implication. Okay, doesn't quote any theologians here, doesn't quote any historical citations. So that's just his view. That's just his impression. Now, we do know that there are some theologians that do argue this, but we don't see any citations here, and he doesn't make the argument. So he's, he's willing to state something but not argue for it. That's a bad sign. If you're, if you, the only thing you do is put out your opinion, but you're not willing to even go to any length to even try to defend it, well, that means you have a pretty weak argument. Five days after her Facebook post, she was put on administrative leave. Okay, that's what the college did. I think that's standard procedure when someone, so especially a professor, a faculty member, uh, does something that is questionable that might be grounds for discipline. That's standard. On January 5th, despite a public uproar, protests by students, some students, a few students, 
and Hawkins' repeated affirmation of the Wheaton College Statement of Faith, essentially a commitment to evangelical Christian ideals and doctrine. The school announced that it was firing her. No, it didn't announce that it was firing her. It was letting her go. Again, again, this article is a hit piece, so they're trying to make it as harsh as possible. In fact, Wheaton College did everything they could to show that they, as a community, administration, the president, all the people involved, love one another. It was not anything personal, but she had crossed a line. She had crossed a spiritual line, a theological line, and the school felt it was important to make a clear stand that as a Christian institution, we believe in one God, three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and so on and so forth. And they did not fire her in the sense of, hey, you're out of here, bye. No, it was, they let her go in a very generous ceremony. They actually uh, instituted a scholarship fund in her name and so on and so forth for, for students and so on and so forth. They were very nice, very kind way, but they did let her go, which is their right. Rather than standing up for the oppressed, as Jesus preached and Hawkins practiced, Wheaton quickly terminated the employment of the only black woman it had granted tenure since it was founded by the abolitionists in 1860, while not firing white men who had come to Hawkins' theological defense. Okay, so this author is trying to stir up all kinds of controversy and trying to smear Wheaton College and, and then show uh, something uh, that isn't there. Race had no problem, no issue in this issue. Race was not an issue. If she had been a white, now they're trying to say this author, while not firing white men who came to Hawkins Theological Defense. So, so, but the white men didn't wear the hijab and the white men didn't say, after all, we all worship the same God. And, and after all, Pope Francis says, and I'm standing in solidarity with Muslim women and so on and so forth. No, the white professors who came to Hawkins Theological Defense were people who were saying, well, in a sense, she might be right that her quote of Pope Francis about worshiping the same God, in one sense, if there's only one God, then the Muslims believe in one God and Christians believe in one God and Jews believe in one God. So in one sense, and so they were teasing out the implications of her statement, but they weren't doing what she did. She, they weren't taking a stand. And so they don't deserve to be fired. And it doesn't have anything to do with their race, white men. Uh, again, the, the author is trying to, to smear Wheaton College, smear Christianity. The school's decision not only to expose, not only exposes the lie behind calls for religious freedom made by powerful Christian institutions that don't want to see their power or tax exemption diminished. Okay, so this author's boiling it all down to power, white male power, you know, the typical leftist line here and who advocate complete freedom for themselves while being content to see it wrested from others. It also calls into question what faith is and what it should stand in service to. No, it doesn't call into question faith at all. Again, this person is a progressive liberal person who wants to boil all religion down to some kind of social activism. And if, if a person is not free to act out in their social activism, then what good is faith anyway? Well, that's the whole point. He misses the whole point of faith. Faith is not boiled down to political activism. It's deeper than that. It's spiritual. It deals with eternal things. And theology is something that this author does not grasp. I think he's only understanding politics. He covers theology from a political angle. Everything boils down to politics. Throughout the film, what is most poignant is the obvious pain that Hawkins experiences at the implication that her Christianity isn't real. 
No one said her Christianity isn't real. What the school said was, you crossed a theological line that you need to repent of and say, look, Christianity worships one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that is not what Muslims and Islam does. That is not what the Muslims worship. And you can't simply say a sweeping statement like, well, after all, we worship the same God, so I'm going to stand in solidarity. No, no. We don't worship the same God in that spiritual sense because we worship a trinity. They don't worship the trinity. And there's all kinds of different other inf- uh, reasons, and it's, it's a long discussion. It's a good discussion. I was a little bit disappointed in Wheaton College for not picking up the discussion. Uh, They were more in the damage control mode, so they wanted to get through this, move on, get attention off of them. But I wish that the president and the theologians and the so-called professors over there would actually profess Christianity and deal with this topic. You know, it's a teachable moment. Do Muslims and Christians and Jews worship the same God and Buddhists and Hindus worship the same God or whatever? Good topic. Why not explore it? In one of the most powerful scenes, she visits the church she grew up in, the church her grandfather pastored until he died of a heart attack two days after he he was baptized her. He baptized her. Will you show me where the racial slur, the Coonville, was painted? Hawkins asked her grandmother, of the vandalism that marred the church in 2016 as they walk its grounds. This part, her grandmother answers, sweeping her arms across the side of the red brick building. The moment passes quickly, but it makes its point. For the black church in America, persecution is not amorphous concept. Ironically, the act of solidarity that ended Hawkins' career at Wheaton embodies exactly what she thinks Christianity advocacy is all about. Backed up by interviews with biblical scholars from none other than Wheaton itself. Same God pointedly reveals the flaws in dogmatic Christianity. In other words, biblical Christianity, historic Christianity. This hit piece is really, really bad. The cost of speaking truth to power and the amazing strength of a woman standing by her convictions. It's a tale of David and Goliath, a testament of the power of faith. So there you have it. Totally, totally hit job on Wheaton College. Unfair. They have the perfect right to decide when a line was crossed theologically and spiritually. And in this case, a theological and spiritual line was crossed. Larisha Hawkins... Um, crossed it, um, she could have backed away. She could have said, well, you're right. I need to do a lot more thinking about that whole statement about we worship the same God. She could have said that. She didn't. She dug her heels in and decided this was going to be a stand that she took, and she lost her job. It's not the college's fault. It's not Christianity's fault. It's not the Bible's fault. It's her choice, and this movie when it comes out will probably be a smear hit job on Wheaton College and unfortunately that's the way it's done in Hollywood so well I hope that's been insightful we'll review the full movie when it comes out later we'll talk to you later next week this is Jeff Short for Christ and Culture God bless